Bayer Leverkusen are in unbelievable form this season. They currently sit top of the table in the Bundesliga undefeated and they've absolutely smashed their Europa League group stage too. Xabi Alonso trainers, Bayer Leverkusen manager has been phenomenal so far but guys, now it's my turn. For the next 10 seasons, I'm going to be Bayer Leverkusen's new manager with the sole purpose of winning as many trophies as humanly possible and making them the most dominant team in Europe. And of course, the takeover wheel is back to make my life either 10 times easier at Bayer Leverkusen or a thousand times more difficult. So this is the starting 11 I've loaded into and no wonder these guys always used to beat me. They've got a phenomenal squad. I mean, they've got Dutch fullback Jeremy Fringpon, they've got Alejandro Grimaldo, they've got Florian Wirtz. This team is absolutely stacked with talent. And on top of that, it's a ridiculously young team as you can see. Most of our best players aren't even close to 1830 yet. The only thing I don't like about this team so far is the fact that they run a three at the back formation. That is basically it. And to top it off, we've got 71 million in our budget to begin this takeover with, man. Everything's just looking up with Bayer Leverkusen. And as always, we'll be keeping track of our top goal scorer, top assister, and how many trophies we've won at the end of each and every season of this takeover. And as you guys know, Newcastle United sit top of the takeover leaderboard with 25 trophies. So that's the target to beat with Bayer Leverkusen. The question is, guys, is this team capable of doing it? Well, I suppose there's only one way to find out. Let's kick in. Now, I'm going to use the gig and pressing tactical vision with the team being so young, I reckon they've got the legs and stamina to be able to do this. And after meddling with the team a little bit, this is by a mile the strongest starting 11 that we can fill with Bayer Leverkusen. And I've changed the formation to the 4-2-3-1 narrow. This is because the 4-2-3-1 suits this team way better than that three at the back formation we were previously rocking with. And granted, we've got a lot of money in our budget in season one to improve this team and make it better than it already is, but we all know until we spun that wheel, we may as well have a fiver in the bank because it's basically useless. So we are going to spin this wheel for the first time in this takeover. What is it going to land on? Reunion. Okay, only signed for Bayer Leverkusen players. That, you know what, guys? That's actually not that bad at all. Now, we could go for Kai Havertz. He's 24-8-2 overall. And whilst he was at Bayer Leverkusen, he absolutely smashed it. We could also go for Leon Bailey. He's 25-8 overall. He's doing pretty well at Aston Villa. But there's one other player that I've got in mind that blows these other two out of the water. I am, of course, talking about Moose. Sit Diaby. He's 84 overall at 24 years old. By a mile, the best player out of the three. And for 72.5 million, he's now once again a Bayer Leverkusen player. And that's our transfer window done. I've also sent Adam Hlozek on loan. He's gone to Liverpool for a couple of years. He's only 20 and 77 overall. We all know how good this guy can be. He's way too good just to be sitting on the subs bench. And that leaves the team looking like this heading into season one. And I think we're going to get off to a fantastic start. If you remember, it took us a good couple of seasons to win any trophy with Newcastle so if we can get ahead of them by winning a couple of trophies this season we'll definitely look good on breaking their record on the leaderboard but this isn't a good start six in the league at the end of season one man what the hell happened to Bayer Leverkusen this year it's ironic isn't it when I play against them they tear everybody apart but when I play as them they are absolutely rubbish we only made it to round two of the DFB poker bloody Verdit Bremen knocked us out man we have had a shocker of a season to be fair though we did make the semis of the Europa League before getting knocked out by Atalanta so there is at least one good thing that came out of season one and I can't lie the improvement this year has been pretty damn impressive I know that some of the players aren't happy but I don't blame them they've been absolutely shocking for season one and Jonas Hoffman was our best player getting 21 goals five assists and 40 games for a 31 year old that's fantastic but the good news is we've got nine more seasons to make this happen with Bayer Leverkusen and our journey with them has only just begun in the overall stats so far Hoffman is our top goal scorer Musa Diaby is our top assistant and we've yet to win a trophy with Bayer Leverkusen. So let's kick season two off by spinning the wheel. Last season we had a good option. What's it going to land on the... Oh, it's inevitably going to be a bad one. Mate, one signing the worst player in the Bundesliga. Bad recruitment. Yeah, you're not bloody kidding. And we've got 119 million in our budget just to make matters even worse. I cannot believe we've got to buy the worst player in the Bundesliga. Now, if memory serves me right, the Premier League's worst player was a 53 rate wing it so he's hoping it's at least better than that guys i found the worst player in the bundesliga davis bautista he's 19 years old to be fair he's 60 rated he is better than the worst player in the premier league
which is a little bit of a bonus, but he's 60 rated. I'm not going to have anything for this guy to do it by a Leverkusen. He's legit worth between 600 and 400,000 euros, but the wheels told us we've got to make one signing, and this is the signing that we've got to make. And for 560,000 euros, he is signed to buy Leverkusen on a five-year deal. And there he is, guys. Davies Bautista, the worst player in the Bundesliga, is now playing for us. That's 560,000 euros I'm never going to see again. And that means the team remains unchanged going into season two. Now, the thing is, though, we do stand a much better chance this season of winning trophies. As you can see, there's been a lot of improvement in the starting 11 alone, and that definitely bodes well for our chances of winning our first trophy. So here's hoping we can just forget about season one and start fresh in season two. And that's exactly what we've done. We've toppled Bayern Munich as the best team in the Bundesliga by one point. And more importantly, that's our first trophy won by a Leverkusen. But we got knocked out in round two of the DFB Pokal by SC Ville. I feel like this is going to be the Papa John's trophy for us. And we made the Europa Conference League final, but final beat us 1-0. That's such a missed opportunity to get the double. I'm pretty certain we should be battering Feyenoord. And I was right, guys. At this starting 11, we should be absolutely destroying teams like Feyenoord. That is definitely a missed opportunity to get the double. And once again, Hoffman is leading the show with 25 goals and 7 assists in 49 games. It is definitely going to be a gutting time when he retires. But the good news is we've won our first trophy with Bayer Leverkusen in our second season with them. Man, that's pretty damn quick. And the team already looks absolutely phenomenal you gotta remember we've got eight more seasons with this team and who knows how successful and how good this team is actually going to become by the end of this takeover and the overall stats so far Hoffman and Diaby remain our top goal scorer and assist and as you guys know we finally got our hands on a trophy but before we go any further if you're enjoying this video so far leave it a big old thumbs up and smash that subscribe button so we're now into season three of this takeover with Leverkusen we've got 200 million euros on the dot for our budget that's phenomenal but I'm going to need that wheel on our side this year because here are Decky, Granit Xhaka and Hoffman. All starting 11 players are in their early to mid theatres and sooner or later that overall is going to start dwindling. So here's hoping we land on something decent. There's a lot of good and bad still on this wheel. Alonso's club history only by players from Real Madrid, Bayern, Liverpool, Ibar or Real Sociedad. You know what? I cannot complain at that at all. We've got the pick of the crop of some fantastic players. And from Real Sociedad I'm going for Alex Ramiro for that goalkeeper position. Granted, he's 30 years old, but he's 86 overall. He's a massive improvement on Hurideki. And I'm going for Conrad Lima from Bayern Munich. He's 84 overall, 28 years old. I reckon we'll at least get four or five good years out of this guy. And for the combined total of 89.8 million euros, we've signed Conrad Lima and Alex Ramiro, and they are now both by Leverkusen players. And that leaves us with 100 million euros on the dot in our budget. We still need to bring in a central attacking midfielder for Hoffen, and I think I know just the player to bring in. I'm here for Dominic Sabozalai from Liverpool. He's 24, already 87 overall. He's literally the perfect successor to Hoffman, but there's only one problem. He's worth between 141 and 110 million euros. And as you guys know, we've only got 100 million euros. So we're going to have to be an incredible negotiator to make this deal happen. And to be fair, we could give them Hoffman because he's worth 68 and a half million. And if we add them to this deal, we can bring that price down a little bit too. So I'm offering them 50 mil alongside Jonas Hoffman. So let's see what they say to this. They've actually accepted that first time. That is absolutely fantastic. And just like that, for 50 mil alongside Jonas Hoffman in a player swap deal, we've now got Dominic Sabozalai playing for Bayer Leverkusen. And that now leaves the team looking like this heading into season three. And I can't lie, guys, I'm very, very confident for what we can do this season. I feel like with the quality we got in the team and the amount of potential in it, not only are we going to develop and grow a lot of players this year, I feel like we are finally going to hit our stride and win the double or maybe even the treble. And I was it wrong, guys. Look at how much improvement that the players have had this year, man. I'm telling you now, if the players have played as well as they've improved, we've had a good year. And it's a cracking start. We've won the Bundesliga twice in a row, this time by six points. I feel like it's safe to say we're the best team in Germany now. But we don't win the Super Cup. Dortmund beat us 2-0. That is a massive missed opportunity to get the double. And we once again make it to round two of the DFB Pokal. Honestly, for the foreseeable future, I've given up on trying to win this competition. And Liverpool knocked us out to the Champions League in the round of 16. I feel like we haven't hit our stride yet with Bayer Leverkusen, but I feel like we're around the corner from it. I mean, just look at the state of this team, for goodness sake. I'm telling you now, it's only a matter of time before this team figures out how to play proper football and we're winning trophies left, right and centre. And this time, Moussa Diabu is our best player, getting 27 goals and 9 assists in 44 games. I knew it was only a matter of time before this guy stepped up to the plate. 
We've now finished our third tier of this takeover, and we've only won two trophies so far. If we're going to catch up with AC Milan Newcastle, next season we have to at least get the double. But the overall stats so far, as you guys know, we've won two trophies, and now Moussa Diaby is both our top goal scorer and assister. So we're almost at the halfway mark in this takeover. What's it landing on this time? Another bad one. Great. What's whoops? Pick two plays from your starting 11 at random to be out injured this season. Are you taking the mick? I mean, it definitely could be worse, but this is just playing irritating. So that means two players out of this entire starting 11 are basically going to be rendered useless to us for season four. Let's hope he picks the worst two players. Okay, then, Will, who are you going to give me to injure first? Andrich. Okay, that's not actually that bad. I think he is one of the worst rated players in the entire starting 11. That's a good start. But who is going to be the second injured player? Oh, I bloody knew it. Moussa, Diaby and Andrich, the best and worst player in the starting 11, are both injured and rendered basically useless to us for this season. And there you go, guys. It's official. Andrich and Diaby are both injured for season four, which means we've got some work to do in this transfer window. Luckily, we've got 183 million to spend, so we can definitely use this money to improve the team. Now, I think it goes without saying we need a DM and a winger in place of Diaby and Andrich for at least one season. But I'm also thinking of a better centre-back than Tom, and he's 30 years old now he's 85 overall he's the weakest link in that back four and he needs replacing the only problem is we only have 183 million to spend and i don't think that's enough to bring in three very goddamn good players but i'm gonna start by bringing bradley barcola over to us he's only 23 and 83 overall so he will definitely last us till the end of this takeover and for 50.7 million on the dot he's our first signing for season four i also went for martin zubermeni for that cdm role he's 27 85 overall and for 61.3 million he's the latest addition to our team and that leaves us with 62 million to bring in a center back and i know exactly who i want but it might be a little bit out of our price range i want Ibrahima kanate to join us at by leverkusen he's 27 87 overall but the only problem is he's worth between 112 and 89 million so if we are to make this deal actually go through we're gonna have to be very good at convincing klopp to let him join us now i'm offering jonathan Tor alongside 50 million euros that's 94 million euros in total so hopefully Hopefully they actually go for this. He's actually gone for it as well. Oh my god, that is absolutely phenomenal news. And just like that, Ibrahim Kanate has now joined us from Liverpool, and that is our transfer window done. And that means this is the starting 11 going into season four. And yes, that is Adam Lozek. He's done his time on loan away from the club. He's massively improved as a player, and he's earned his right to get that starting 11 spot. I'm telling you now, guys, I've got a good feeling about season four. I feel like this is the year we finally hit our stride and we start winning trophies left right and center but this isn't a good start we haven't won the Bundesliga in fact we were nowhere near it we're 14 points behind Bayern at Munich so much for being the bloody best team in Germany but we have won the Super Cup this time beating Dortmund 2-1 that's our first trophy for season four but we only made it to round three of the DFB Pokal you know why it's better than round two and we made the semis of the Champions League Real Madrid knocked us out 5-4 on aggregate man are we ever gonna win this competition at this point i don't get it where are we going wrong where we can't win more than one trophy a season man we've definitely got the talent in the squad to do it i don't get why we can't but i've got to admit the stats aren't exactly incredible dominic sabozlai is our best player though gained 22 goals and 13 assists in 47 games that's not that bad at all for a camp but i've got to admit guys if by this time next season if we haven't won at least six or seven trophies altogether i don't even think we're going to catch ac milan in the overall stats so far diaby is still our top goal scorer floor Florian Wirtz is now our top assist, and we've won three trophies altogether with Bayer Leverkusen. Okay, season five of this takeover, we're halfway through, we need something good. That isn't something good. Sandro Tonali, suspend a random player in the starting 11 for the season for betting. Oh my god, it's just one thing after another. So just like last year, one of these players in the starting 11 is basically going to be useless for us for season five. The question is, who is it going to be this time? I mean, I feel like whoever it lands on, it's going to be bad. Had Florian Wirtz. Are you kidding me? He's one of our best players. And there it is, guys. It's official. He's out for the next 12 months. Florian Wirtz is no longer any use to us for season.
season five. But the good news is we have 290 million euros in our budget and we're allowed to spend it because the wheel didn't say anything about making no signings. And I think it's time we properly sort out our midfield. Lama and Zubamendi are the weakest links in this entire team and that needs to change. So I'm bringing in Nicolo Ravella from Man United. He's only 25 years old and he's 86 overall. He'll definitely be one of our best players and he'll be here till the end of the takeover. And I'm also going for Declan Rice from Youth. He's 28, he's 87 overall. I feel like whilst these pair will definitely be expensive, they will absolutely make the difference for season five. And for the combined total of 185.8 million, we've made Declan Rice and Nicolo Ravella buy Leverkusen place and that's our transfer window done. And that leaves the team looking like this heading into season five. And I feel like this year it's make or break for Bayer Leverkusen. We now at least have to win the double, treble or even quadruple every single season until the end of this takeover we stand any chance of catching up with Newcastle United or even AC Milan. But this is a good start. We've won the Bundesliga by 11 points, only losing two games out of 34. That is genuinely a phenomenal start. We've even won the DFB Pokal beating Dortmund 3-2 in the final. That is the double secured. Let's see if we can get the treble. But that's not going to happen because Arsenal have knocked us out of the Champions League in the round of 16. I find it ironic that every time I face Leverkusen, they give me a seriously good game. But now that I'm playing as them, they cannot win the Champions League to save their lives. I mean, come on, guys. What more do we have to do to this team to make sure we win that competition for Season 6? But I've got to say, the stats are pretty impressive. Six players in total got more than 10 goal contributions this year, man. That's fantastic. But we've now got five years left with this Bayer Leverkusen team to win them as many trophies as humanly possible. And when you take a look at the leaderboard, I'm not going to lie to you guys, our chances of catching up with AC Milan and Newcastle United are very slim at this point. And the overall stats so far, Diaby is our top goal scorer, Dominic Sabozalai is our top assist, and we've won five trophies with Bayer Leverkusen. So it's now season six of this takeover with Leverkusen, and as you can see, guys, we're doing pretty well. Majority of our best players aren't even 30 years old yet. And considering the fact we're six seasons into Karimo, that's a pretty decent feat. And we've got just under a quarter of a billion to spend to improve this team this year, so here's hoping that wheel actually gives us something pretty good. Okay, the good definitely outweighed the bad in this one. How the hell have we still landed on a bad one? Transfer ban, no signings this season, unlucky Goodwin. Brilliant, thank you very much for that wheel. So whilst we do have 245 million to spend, we cannot spend a single penny of it because we're not allowed to make any transfers, man. That is absolutely unreal. So this is the team that's going to go into season six. And don't get me wrong, guys, it is a fantastic team, but we definitely needed to make improvements. And it's once again a good start. We've won the Bundesliga for the second season in a row, this time by 13 points. But Bayern Munich beat us to win the Super Cup, man. We need to start winning trophies like this if we want to catch up with Newcastle and AC Milan. But hold up, we've won our second trophy of the season. We've once again won the DFB Pokal. As for the Champions League, we were placed in Group E alongside Atletico, Ajax and Shakhtar Donetsk. And as you can see, we did quite comfortably go through to the round of 16, where this time we faced Marseille and batter them 4-2. We then beat Atletico 5-2 in the quarterfinals. And we batted Man City 4-0 in the semis. We're playing Benfica in the Champions League final. Please, God, let this be our first Champions League trophy. Come on, boys. Don't let me down. Come on! It's about damn time as well. We've beaten them 4-0. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is not only our first Champions League trophy won, that's the treble secured. It took them long enough, six years in fact, but we finally got our hands on that Champions League trophy, man. We're officially the best team in the world. And these stats are more like it. Closet, Diaby and Sabozlai really ran the show this year, didn't they? I won't sugarcoat this. Even with the treble, we are still miles behind Newcastle and AC Milan, but this is a step in the right direction. And the overall stats so far, Diaby and Sabozlai are still our top goal scorer and assistant, but we've now won eight trophies with Bayer Leverkusen. Okay, there's more good on this wheel than bad, so if we land on the bad one, it is rigged. Finally, we get a good one. Wonder Kid, make a player of your choice 16 with 90 potential. That is more like it. And now I get to make one of these players 16 years old with 90 potential, and I think I know just who to give this to. I'm giving it to Alejandro Grimaldo. He's been by a mile one of the most underrated players from the start until now, so I think he definitely deserves it. And to be fair, with him being in his early 30s, that would have meant that we had to bring in another left back, and honestly, with him being 92 rated, I really didn't want to do that. And somehow, we've got just under half a billion to spend on the team this season, man. I know that we won the treble last year, but that is a lot of money as a reward. Now, I definitely feel like a successor to Alex Ramiro wouldn't go amiss. He's almost 35 years old. Granted, he's 90 overall, 
Michael, but that rating will not last like that for much longer. And to be fair, Tapsuba, Kanate, Raizu, Bamendi, they've all turned 30 years old now, so it might be a good idea to try to find players to be their successors too. And we've already established that we've got no issues financially. It's literally a case of finding the players to replace them when the time comes. Now, starting with the keeper, I went for Felipe Ferreira. He's only 21 years old and already 85 overall. And as you can see, he's an exciting prospect. And now for 61 and a half million, he's a Bayer Leverkusen player. And that still leaves us with over 400 million euros in our budget just to sort three positions out. And I think I know just the place to bring in. Firstly, I'm going for 25 year old Antonio Silva for that centre back role. He's 88 overall. He's six foot two. He is the perfect successor to Tap Sober. And I'm going for Yosuke Vardy off for Kanate's successor. He's only 27. He's 88 overall. He's already played in the Bundesliga, so this one makes absolutely perfect sense. And finally, I'm going for Maxime Duran to eventually replace Declan Rice. He's only 22. He's 86 overall. And let's be honest, guys, this one is an absolute no brainer. And for the combined total of 334.6 million, we have signed all of these players, and that is our transfer window done for season seven. And that means this is the starting 11 going into the campaign ahead now obviously the team itself hasn't actually changed but on the subs bench as you can see we have brought in a lot of goddamn quality to replace them eventually now this team last year successfully got the treble so let's see if in season seven they can do the exact same thing but this isn't the start we were after guys we haven't won the bundesliga this season we were five points off dortmund if we were serious about winning the treble again we've just made this a lot harder for ourselves but we have just won the super cup so at least we have at least won one trophy make that two trophies because we've beaten Bayern Munich in the DFB Pokal so there is a chance that we still have won the treble. Boys how the hell do we not win the Super Cup man? Real Batiste beat us 3-2 on penalties that is such a missed opportunity to get one more trophy but we've once again won the Champions League beating Inter Milan 3-0 in the final. How do we beat Inter Milan 3-0 but lose to Real bloody Batiste? I can't lie guys that is a massive missed opportunity to get the quadruple and even though some of the players in this team are now entering their early 30s this squad is still absolutely phenomenal and with the team we've got right now i'm not being funny guys we should definitely be aiming to win the quadruple every season now until the end of this takeover and it looks like musa diaby was once again our best player getting 40 goal contributions in 53 games fair play to the guy and that means the overall stats so far we've won 11 trophies with bayer leverkusen diaby is still our top goal scorer and dominic sabozalai is still our top assistant so it's now time for season eight of this takeover and as you can see from the coaching system i've been very busy making sure they are filled to the brim with the best coaches I can bring in. And let's be honest guys, when you look at the team, obviously it is filled with a lot of high potential players, but those coaches have definitely helped them to get to this point. And we have got a lot of money in our budget this year, 339 million euros to spend. Now looking at the leaderboards, we're never catching Newcastle United, but we can catch AC Milan if we can get the quadruple every single season from here on out. And we've definitely got the money to pull this one off, it's just whether that wheel's going to be on our side this season and let us actually spend it. Alright then Will, my fate is in your, there's no way there's more good than bad and we've landed on the worst one. Make your best player zero rated and make no signings. I genuinely cannot get over how unlucky we've been with this wheel so far man. It has absolutely shafted us at every single turn. But it looks like we're going to the wheel again because Jeremy Fringpong and Dominic Sabozlai are our joint highest rated players at 94 overall but let's be honest no matter who it lands on it's a loser lose situation. So let's see who we are going to be releasing. Sabozlai or Fringpong and it looks like we are getting rid of Sabozlai. Honestly guys, that takeover wheel can go straight to hell. And there he is guys, 8 overall, the worst player in the entirety of this game now and let's be honest, I know he's not 1 overall but 8 overall isn't exactly incredible. And because we can't make any signings this 339 million is absolutely worthless. And that means this is the starting 11 going into season 8. Now we do have Bar Cola, luckily enough, who can go into Sabozalai's place in the team, but I'd have much preferred to have Sabozalai playing there than Bar Cola. But I've got to be honest, even with Sabozalai not in the team anymore, I still fancy our chances of having a very successful season. I just hope I'm bloody right. Well, I was wrong, guys. We haven't won the Bundesliga in Season 8. We were actually 10 points behind Bayern Munich. 
Right now, I don't know how we've done elsewhere, but this definitely isn't a good sign. We have won the Super Cup, though, beating Dortmund 2-1, so there is still hope that we can win more trophies. But we got knocked out in round two of the DFB Pokal, so he's back to square one there. And we got knocked out in the round of 16 of the Champions League by Inter Milan. 6-3 on aggregate. Bloody hell, they absolutely annihilated us. I've got to be honest, I'm so disappointed in this team, man. How do we have a team full of 90-80 players or above, and we don't win more than one trophy? trophy and even though these stats for the most part are pretty impressive it does not overshadow the fact that we are massively flopped in season eight but the good news is from now until the end of this takeover these only good things that we can land on on that wheel so our chances of winning trophies have absolutely gone up and the overall stats so far we've won 12 trophies with via leverkusen diaby is still our top goal scorer and an 18 rated dominic sabos is our top assister it's now our ninth year in charge of via leverkusen these two things left on the wheel and it looks like we've landed need on max overall make a player of your choice 99 rated now i've got to be honest going through all the players in our squad i think this is such an easy decision to make i am making dominic suppose 99 overall we had to make him the worst player in the world not too long ago and now we get the chance to make him the best and there he is in the starting 11 96 rated suppose life for some reason he just refuses to go to 99 rated even though i have maxed out all of his stats and we've still got just under half a billion to spend on this by 11 q team you know what i'm pulling absolutely no punches with who we sign and we're gonna sign the best of the best and honestly guys i'm not even sure what positions i'm gonna buy for i'm just gonna look for the high traded players i possibly can and bring them into the team now i'm starting the transfer window by bringing in trent alexander arnold granted he's 32 but he's 88 overall we need backup fullbacks as well because we haven't got any and for 80 million on the dot is our first signing of season nine and that still leaves us with 363 million in our budget we've got way too too much money but i'm gonna spend it by bringing two shimeni over to buy leverkusen he's currently playing for brighton believe it or not but that isn't gonna last like that for much longer i'm also bringing alessandro bastoni to buy leverkusen as well he's 32 he's 90 rated and the best part is his contract's running out meaning we'll get a much cheaper deal and finally i'm going for donnarumma for our goalkeeper he's six foot five 32 years old 90 rated this one is an absolute no-brainer and for the combined total of 220.9 million euros we have made all of these plays by a Leverkusen plays and that's our transfer window done for season 9 and that means this is the team we're rocking with heading into the next season in charge of by a Leverkusen and let's be honest guys if we do not win at least 2 trophies this year there's something wrong. I mean look at the source bench as well if anything happens to any one of the players in the starting 11 we're more than covered but let's be honest guys with our current track record with by a Leverkusen I'll be very surprised if we even win 1 trophy but I could be very wrong guys we've won the Bundesliga by 10 points meaning we've already won 1 trophy for season 9 Made that trophy number two because we've won the Super Cup beating Bayern Munich. But we only made the quarters of the DFB Pokal. But it's official, guys. We've got the treble after beating Benfica 1-0 in the Champions League final. You know what, guys? That's not a bad recovery from last year. That's our second treble with Bayer Leverkusen. And overall, guys, the stats do look pretty decent. I'm a bit shocked at Sabosla, though. Only gained 24 goal contributions in 48 games for a 96 rated player. That's abysmal. But we've got one more year left now with this Bayer Leverkusen team and all I want is to win the treble once again man if we can do that I'll go home happy in the overall stats after season 9 we've won 15 trophies with Bayer Leverkusen Diaby is still our top goal scorer and Sabozalai is still our top assistant so it's now our 10th and final season of this takeover there's only one thing left on the wheel that is takeover and that means we are adding 100 million to our budget and that means we've got half a billion in our budget to spend on the team in season 10 but I'm going to make quite a controversial decision I'm not going to spend a single penny of that on the start in 11 or the source bench for that matter i'm not spending a penny of it at all and let me just explain why last year when i was searching for players in the transfer market i really struggled to find players to bring to the team and those players that i did bring to the team were the best of the bunch so whilst we do have a lot of money to spend it'd be absolutely pointless spending it because no matter who we bring into the team they wouldn't even fit on the source bench and as you can see from the leaderboard we are never in a million years going to catch either ac milan or newcastle united so for the final year in charge of Bayer Leverkusen. Let's try to win as many trophies as possible and end this takeover on a high note. Well, guys, we're off to a great start. We've won the Bundesliga in our 10th and final season of this takeover by 20 points. And I've just realised something. We didn't lose a single game all season in the Bundesliga, man. We're officially invincible with Bayer Leverkusen. But we lost to Freiburg in the Super Cup final. Go bloody figure. And we also made the quarterfinals of the DFB Pokal. But we did end up winning the Super Cup, so we have 
got the double at least. But we only made it to the quarters of the Champions League because Chelsea knocked us out on penalties. Really, I should be happy about that because in real life, Chelsea are absolutely dog crap right now. But you know what, guys? The stats at the end of this season are probably the best I've seen in quite some time, especially Sabo's life. 43 goal contributions in 49 games. That's more bloody like it. But this is the final team that we've ended this takeover with, man. And you know what? All things considered, I think we've done a bloody good job. In the overall stats to end this takeover, Diaby and Sabozlai were our top goal scorer and top assist, and we won 17 trophies overall with Bayer Leverkusen. But as you can see from the leaderboard, Bayer Leverkusen are rock bottom, AC Milan are second, and Newcastle United are still first. I think it's going to take some doing to beat Newcastle's record. But that is the end of this takeover with Bayer Leverkusen. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on this video, smash that subscribe button. If you want to see another video that I've done, click right here.